what made our work with the quadratic extension of the integer so simple. So let's see if we can come up with a norm function here. And so it should be able to take the norm of a polynomial. And the norm of a polynomial is going to be some rational number. In fact, it's probably going to be some integer. But for now, let's just say that it's a rational number. Because in general, what a norm function does is it takes an element from your ring, and it gives you an element in some, well, let's see. How do I want to say this? It takes a, an element from your extension, and it gives you something from your original ring. So in our examples from before, the extensions were z adjoin radical d, uh, and the ring that was underneath it, of which it was an extension, was the integers itself. Um, so here's my idea. We would still like, for the kinds of conclusions that we made about the norm before, uh, to hold in, in as much as they can. So for example, we want that 135 result that we've used now several times. We would like to be able to say that p is a unit if and only if the norm of p is equal to plus or minus 1. But remind me again, what were the units in the polynomial ring whose coefficients were rational? What are the invertible elements of a polynomial ring? They're the constants. So the first thing that we know that we want is we want a function, a norm function, which assigns the number 1 to every constant polynomial. How might we do that systematically? Let me leave that as a rhetorical meatball out there, because there's a second thing we want from the norm as well. So we want to satisfy both that criterion and the other criterion that we used to prove all of the things we proved about the norm is we have the multiplicativity property. The norm of p times q is supposed to equal the norm of p times the norm of q. And again, this is really, really useful because p times q is an element of q adjoined t. But the norm of p and the norm of q are both elements of q, rationals. So they're just numbers. Um, and having this multiplicativity property helps us a lot because we know about the multiplication properties of rational numbers more than we know about the multiplication properties of rational polynomials. So we want both of these things to be true. So can you think of a way that we can assign to every constant polynomial the number 1, and to be able to assign to the product of two polynomials the product of those two norms. Let's be straightforward about this for a moment. Let's suppose I have the polynomial p equals 5, and then I have another polynomial over here, q equals 1 minus t squared, or something like that. We know what we want the norm of p to be. Yeah, we want the norm of p to be 1 for sure. Uh, we don't yet know what we want the norm of q to be. But we do know, according to the multiplicativity property, that if I multiply p times q and get 5 minus 5t squared, what should I get for a norm there? Yeah, exactly. Whatever the norm of 1 minus t squared is. So if I call this n or something, then when I multiply those two polynomials together, I should also get n for the norm of the product. So because these two are equal, my question is, what is, in, what is it that both q and p times q have in common that we could use to characterize their norm? Well, one thing they have in common is their degree. There's a polynomial of degree 2. So let's see if we can come up with a way 
to use the degree to make this happen. What's one idea? equal to the degree. It seems to work in this example. Norm of p is equal to the degree of p. So the multiplicativity property looks like it works, but there's something else that's amiss if we try making that definition. What's wrong with that? Right, so just leaving leaving the norm as being equal to the degree is not quite what we want. Okay? Because then, even though multiplicativity kind of looked like it held there for a moment, it doesn't actually. In fact, there was even a problem with our original p, that if we set the norm to be equal to the degree, then what would the norm of this polynomial be? Zero. Zero. Um, and then we'd be really in a problem because then if we multiplied 5 by 1 minus t squared, the degree of the result would be 2, but the norm of the result would have to be 0. So, okay, this doesn't quite work. But can we pick up the pieces? Is there a way that instead of assigning the number 0 to a constant polynomial, I can be make sure, making sure to assign the number 1? And a way to handle the fact that multiplication of polynomials does not tend to multiply their degrees. In fact, what do we know multiplication of polynomials does to their degree? It adds. So the degree of PQ is the degree of P plus the degree of Q. But we don't want a plus there. We want to somehow make that into multiplication. So can you think of an operation from arithmetic that can turn addition into multiplication? What operation intertwines addition and multiplication in arithmetic? An operation that sends 0 to 1 and which sends n plus m to n times m. something raised to a power. For example. Let's try that. Let's try defining the norm of a polynomial to be 2 raised to the power of the degree. We've got about 15 minutes, but I'd like you to check with the people next to you that first of all, the conclusion of 135 will still hold. In other words, that the constant polynomials are exactly those whose norm is equal to plus minus 1. That should be more or less obvious. But then also, directly check this statement. The norm of PQ is equal to the norm of P times the norm of Q. And see what you can come up with that. And as an exploration question, I'd like to know, does this characterize irreducible polynomials for us. According to 139. So in 139, the conclusion was that irreducible elements of z adjoined square root of d were exactly those whose norm was equal to a prime number. Does that work for this? <laughs> 